Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pixel, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a plugin. I've created this plugin here, which is called Pixel Stuff, which just inserts different parts that are useful when building. When you click on a button, it'll insert whatever part is listed, and it'll insert it in front of the camera with all the same properties. They're all smooth plastic, they're anchored, and they are 2x2x2. Two by two by two. So we have sphere, cylinder, we have a truss, a corner wedge, mesh part, and a light source block. So all of these things were coded by me, and it's quite simple to make actually to create a plugin on Roblox. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that today. You might be wondering why would I need to create a plugin? What even are plugins? Are they helpful? They are very helpful, actually. Um, not only is this plugin helpful for just being able to insert a part and immediately start building with it instead of having to tinker with the properties until they're where you need them to be with like the anchored and material, all that should be streamlined, which that's what I've done and that's personal preference for me. These are things that I like to use to build with. But we also have other things we can do. There's this fence plugin, which allows you to create a fence by just clicking around your world. This is an example of creating a cool plugin that can help with building as well. Another building plugin is something called S Studio Build Suite, and this is kind of like an advanced building tool system. As you can see, you can move parts and resize parts and rotate as well. I like to use this um, when I'm working with multiple parts that I need to work on at the same time. So if I go ahead and change this um, to 0.25, that's what I like to build in, I can go ahead and drag these up. And if I wanted to resize all of these at the same time, I could. It makes it quite easier, it saves some time, depending on what you're working on really. And there's a cool edge selection tool part of it as well that I think is pretty cool. It allows you to rotate parts at the edge like that, which is pretty cool as well. So as you can see, there's multiple different things you can do. Um, not all of them have to be building related. This one is, this one inserts a skybox. You just click a button and it will change your skybox to all these different ones that are pre-loaded here for you, which is, I think is kind of cool. We also have a set sun tool, which if you're trying to change the sun, you need the sun in a certain location, you can drag it around like this, which I think is pretty cool as well. So we're going to talk about how to actually do this, which it's quite simple. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. The first thing we're going to want to do is go to server script service, and we're going to insert a script. It really doesn't matter where you insert the script, just you just need a script that's really all you need and we're going to name this plugin you can name it anything you want but this is just for test purposes on this video um so what we're going to work with first is we need to create a toolbar and what a toolbar is it, it's basically our little section that we're going to store these parts in everything is automatic or um automated so when we insert parts it'll kind of just elongate our toolbar by itself there's no specific things you need to do it's actually quite simple so we're gonna do local toolbar equals plugin create toolbar make sure that the capital letters that i'm writing are the same as what you're writing the color should be the same as well as you can see this create toolbar is yellow and this is blue depending on what your um, colors are on your studio, which if you're using default studio, everything should be the same as mine, if you have the dark mode on. Um, but we have to give it a name. So I'm just gonna name this create part. This plugin that we're making is just going to insert a part in front of the camera with a set of properties that we are going to define. So after this, we're gonna go down and we're gonna create a button. So we're gonna do local button equals um toolbar create button and as you can see the create button turns yellow as well and there's three values we need to insert in here three arguments um 
the first one is going to be the name of your button so the name is going to be create part and to show you this is the name we have the name right under our image which the image is actually a third one our second value is going to be the description of that button so if i go out here and hover my mouse over create part a little window is going to pop down with information on what that button does and this one says create a two by two part and this one should be the same for all plugins see this one says create fences edit settings curve creates a part insert rigs to animate see there's all of these plugins have a description so after you pick a description we're just going to put creates a part we are going to do the image and the image can be anything that you want I'm just going to insert this default script icon and sh I'll show you in a second. It's just this little icon here actually. I can just show you now. This little script icon, that's what will appear when we begin to show our plugin. But if you need to use a different image or your own, you can either upload it to Cal or get one from the marketplace. I'm just going to go to my images here in my inventory and find the image you want. Say I wanted this Pepe image, I can right click and hit copy asset URL. You need to copy the URL, not the ID, or else it will not work. Just go ahead and copy it. And let me close this. As you see, when I press control V to paste, it's going to paste in this little URL thing. And that's what you're supposed to put in here. But I'm going to leave it on my script one. And you can do the same in the marketplace as well. Go to marketplace, images. We can search, oh, we don't even need to search. What if I wanted to put this cattail? I could just copy it, hit copy asset URL, and it would work as well. So to make sure that our plugin is working and you've made no errors, we're going to insert our plugin into our plugins toolbar. And to do that, we're just gonna click on it and right click and hit save as local plugin. When you click this button, it's going to open up your directory on your computer to just your plugins folder in your Roblox folder. And I'm just going to name this create part. And when you hit save, it's going to load it up and it'll spawn in your plugins folder. So as you can see, it says create part, create part. This is our name. This is our button with the name. And when you click on it, nothing's going to happen, of course, because we haven't scripted that yet. But if it doesn't appear, you've done something wrong or you might have to restart your studio. I doubt you have to restart. As you can see, it just popped up for me. So make sure that everything that I've typed, you have typed, just to make sure there's no errors. You can go back and change after the fact. Just make sure that you're typing it correctly and everything is working. Um, after that, we can go ahead and start scripting our button. So to script our button, we're going to do something called button.click. Click is the event that's um, related to toolbar buttons in this case. So we're going to connect and we're going to we're going to make a function. So anything we type in here is going to run when we click the button. So anything you type in here, and this is kind of something that you might not have thought when you were making, when you were thinking about making a plugin is that you actually use Lua and you code plugins as if you were coding a script in a game. It's exactly the same. So, what we're going to do is we're going to be inserting a part. So we're going to do local part and we're going to insert this part and we're going to insert it into workspace. So this instant um, function is just going to, we put our class name here, which the class of our a part is called part with the capital P. And this is the parent of that instance and it's going to be workspace. And then what we're going to do is start changing the properties. We're going to make sure that our part is anchored we're going to change the material, which is an enum. Make sure you type enum and then the material and then the material you want. I'm just gonna do smooth plastic. We're gonna change the, mm, you can change the brick color if you want by doing the brick color equals brick color that are new. And then you can put whatever color you want. I'm just gonna make it white. And then we're going to change the surface types of our brick because if you insert a part by, via instance.new, the top and bottom will be studs and it will be inlet um, respectively. Um, so I don't like that look, so I'm just going to make it smooth. So we're going to do top surface equals enum.surface type dot 
smooth no outlines and you can do the same for the bottom surface typing the wrong thing boom like that and then lastly if we want to change the size we can do part.size use vector 3.new and change the size to 222 you can change it to anything you want but now if we run our plugin it should do everything we just coded here but you need to make sure that you update your plugin so hit right click on it and hit save as local plugin again and hit save and hit yes and oh I don't know why it created two. That's not supposed to happen. Um, but this is the old one. This is the new one. If we click it, as you can see, it's inserting a part, but it's inserting at the center of our world, which is 000, which is the, the default position for inserting a part, which we do not want to happen. We want it to insert in front of our camera like I coded here. So here's a little bit of advanced a little advanced I would say because we're working with cameras and C frames so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a variable called camera and that is going to be workspace dot current camera which current camera represents the current camera of the game and in context of using it in studio as we there's a camera up here it's the camera that we're moving around to view the game so when we're moving like this, we're moving around this camera here. But when you're in-game, your player also can access current camera. And you usually access it in a local script, and that's how you uh, manipulate a character, a player's camera. But we're just doing it in studio, so we can do it in the script as well. Um, but anyways, we need to access the C-frame of that camera. Because we need to set the part.cframe equal to the C-frame of the camera. But if we do that, it's going to insert the part in the camera and you won't see it. You would have to move your camera and then click on the part, which is inconvenient. So what we're going to do is we're going to do plus and we're going to do parentheses. And inside these parentheses, we're going to do camera dot C frame dot look vector times five. And what this is doing is just moving the part five studs in the direction the camera is looking. And since I know this in hindsight, I'm just going to save us some time. When you do this, it's going to rotate the part because C-frame preserves orientation of a part, which orientation is how a part looks. As you can see, our orientation here is zero, zero, because um, I've already coded it in. I'll show you in a second. But if I rotate this part, you see that our orientation values are changing like this because of how I'm rotating it in here. So what would happen is it would face the camera, but it would also face the, C the orientation of this camera, which as you can see, goes up and down, left and right, things like that. But we want it to be zero, zero, zero. So all we have to do is just set the part dot orientation and it's a vector three value. So it makes sure we do vector three dot new and we're going to do zero, zero, zero like that. And that should be our script complete, except one more thing, which we're going to get into in a second. But if I go ahead and save this and refresh our thing, it will show us our part in front of us as I click on it. But here is where this is probably one of the most important parts of making a plugin. If we hit the undo button here at the top left or hit control Z, it undid everything. It undid all of it and it went back to our previous undo that we had before. If I press Control Y, it'll bring it all back. And you might be wondering, oh, why is that happening? The reason that's happening is because we actually have to manually set a waypoint in the undo history every time we do something in a plugin. So to do that, all we have to do is access a service called change history. So we're going to do local change history service equals game get service, not get actor, get service. Um, change history service. Just hit tab and it'll autofill in like that. And all we need to do is do change history service, set waypoint, and you just give it a name. The name really doesn't matter. I'm just going to put create part. Um, and now if I go ahead and update this plugin again, hit yes, we should now be able to insert multiple parts. And in between every part, we can just undo it like this. So it's very important to make sure you do that, especially when 
doing anything if you want to make a plugin for yourself or for um, developers on Roblox. It's inconvenient and really frustrating. I've experienced it with really popular plugins too, where I will undo something and it will undo like two or three things because they didn't code in a waypoint system, which I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but it does. It's very infuriating, especially if you're trying to build and you accidentally insert something you didn't want to and you just undid something. And then what you're going to have to do is just manually delete it yourself, which it just saves time and it's good practice when making plugins. So other than that, that's everything you need to know. Of course, all you have to do to create another button is just type another button variable and hit two bar create button. Um, what part do we want? Create reg. Do I still have that asset saved? I do. I have another image here, which I'll show you. Um, and that, and you just copy this and just change the name here and change some properties and stuff. And boom, you'll be on your way with making a fully working plugin. Um, but let me show you if I go ahead and save this again. I have a second button here, which is like a little cattail that we had earlier. Um, we click on it, nothing's like going to happen because we didn't code anything in. Um, but the last thing we need to do is actually upload this plugin to the Roblox website. So to do that, you're going to click on it, right click, hit publish as plugin, and we're going to do create, create a, why is my e not working? Create part plugin. Just do test, um, put a description, and then you can go ahead and make sure it's on sale. Putting it on sale means other people can install it to their game. Maybe you don't want people to install it, you want it to be private, then you can. But I'm just going to keep it off. And then you hit submit. It'll upload, it'll give you a link. You can click on that or just go to your Roblox account. And boom, you've uploaded your plugin. I recommend to actually install the plugin to um, your game. Because this plugin is a local plugin, that means, um, which maybe you should keep it on your computer. Since it's on your computer, you can access the plugin whenever. But if you, for an example, if you start Roblox without an internet connection, all the plugins will error. They won't pop up because um, you need internet to access the plugins because you've installed them from the internet. But these are local ones, so they will appear but I just installed them from the website as well. So this one is the one that I've uploaded and it's not my local one, but that's fine. So other than that, you should be on your way with making any plugin you want. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did and you had a lot of fun and you learned a lot of things, um, I would really appreciate if you liked the video. It does help me out a ton and maybe even consider subscribing if you aren't already. Um, other than that, Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.